beautiful. My name is Maria, and I'm so glad you're here because I've got a question for you. Have you experienced a yoni steam? Do you know what I'm talking about when I say yoni steam? Well, there is a lot of excitement about yoni steams right now all over the internet. And today's episode of Apothecary Wisdom, I'm going to talk to you all about some of the things you need to know to have a safe and beautiful yoni steam experience. <laughs> My name, like I said, is Maria, and I'm the owner and the creator of Birth Song Botanicals, and we make nourishing herbal remedies for women and children. And as a midwife and as an herbalist, one of my jobs, passions, loves in life is to carry on the ancient and healing traditions of women and of our, of our mentors and our ancestors and of our mothers and to the modern world and bridge them with the one foot rooted in ancient tradition and another one in modern day science and to hold them both up together and that's what we're going to have that perspective when we talk about our yoni steams. Because yoni steams are an ancient practice and they're a healthcare practice, they're a self healthcare practice that helps you connect with your body, connect with your wounds, help regulate your menstruation, help you recover from birth, and help you as your life changes, as you enter new life phases, like into your perimenopause and your menopausal years. But before we get too deep into the steaming itself, I want to talk a little bit about the word yoni. And I want to ask you, how do you refer to your female anatomy? Like, what word do you use? And when I ask you to talk about it, like, what comes up for you? Like, right now, feel the sensations in your body. Something's coming up for you, right? I know it is. But here's the reason. There are studies, this isn't about your yoni, this is about your heart. There are studies that show that people that have had a weak heart, or they have heart disease, and they change their lives in some way. They implement these really life-affirming, self-loving healthcare practices. They start talking really kindly to themselves. They have a gratitude practice. They focus on forgiveness and acceptance and they spend time really nourishing and nurturing themselves. And science can show that those practices themselves, that by itself, can strengthen a heart, it can improve the heartbeat, it can strengthen the vascularity and the circulation. So from that principle, if that can influence your heart, then it can influence all your other organs. You can send loving intention to every organ, right? And when you send your loving intention to every organ, it's going to perform better, it's going to work better, it's going to feel better. So let's go back to the word yoni, right? How we think about our bodies, how we talk about our bodies, how we relate to our bodies, how we communicate what's happening with our bodies to other people, really, show how we're either really connected and loving and supportive to our bodies or how we're disconnected and disjunct and uncomfortable. So the word yoni itself is a Sanskrit word and it refers to the female genitalia, to, their, to the vagina and to the uterus, right? That whole space is a sacred place and it refers to the sacred portal of life, right? And also, when you think about other ancient traditions, the Taoists, when they refer to the vagina, they call it the, the golden lotus, or what do they call it, the, the gates of paradise, or the precious pearl, or the treasure. I kind of like the treasure. <laughs> But then, when I googled it the other day to prepare for this video, this is what Google says. I'm going to read it. So, the vagina is referred to as a muscular tube leading from the external genitalia to the cervix of the uterus in women and in most ma female mammals. So that's pretty... And 
then I learned about the word vagina when I was studying to be a midwife. It was the first time I realized and learned this. Vagina is a Latin word which means a scabbard or a sheath for a sword. So you have your sword and you have the sheath that covers the sword. That covering of the sword, that's the vagina. And then at first when I learned that, I was like whew, outraged. Like, you got to be kidding that that's how you describe the female vagina, right? Like that is so disrespectful and so hurtful and like how a sword is like a killing and it's damaging and hurtful and, um, and it's sexist and I was just up in arms, right? At the time, I didn't even fully understand the level of why I don't like that is also, it's, that is giving your vagina one function just to cover the penis. That's its only function. And I'm here to remind you, we all know that our vagina and our uterus is far more capable and has such capacity to bring life and creativity. It is powerful and sensitive and beautiful and it is way more important than just to cover and hold that. Also, as I'm making this video and standing here right now, I'm reflecting on how I still use the word vagina because I want to be correct, I want to be accurate, I want to be scientific, I want to be seen as a professional that you listen to. However, when I hear that word and it goes back into my memory of what that just means, it makes me upset and angry. And then I'm reflecting on myself right now how much of that anger, because I can feel it, like I start to kind of stand up a little bit bigger, how much of that energy is influencing my body and influencing my biochemistry when I'm constantly using a word that I know that I don't like so that you will think that I'm an expert, right? That's an interesting thing. This is an important conversation to be having. That's why I'm glad you're here because when we work together like this, we grow and learn from each other. Okay, so I was on the internet and I was thinking about what are other words that people use to describe their vagina or their yoni. And so some of them, I wrote them down, they call it down there, or the kitty, or goodness, or some other things I'm not gonna say. You can use your imagination right there. And then other people say it's the reason life exists, it's the source of addiction, it's the a tool used by women to control men. It is a place where a man, the only place a man truly feels at home. Uh, the thing that makes life wor worth living. So each one of us, we heard those descriptions and some of them made us smile. Some of us made us feel beautiful and sacred and uplifted and some of us we rejected and we were like, oh, I don't describe, that's not me, I don't, right? So there was a feeling, you had a feeling and a reaction to those words. That's really important for you to synthesize and see yourself and how you respond and how you react and how you describe your own body. Do you describe your own body in a way that feels sacred and wholesome? Or do you use language to make other people happy? Right? All right, so there's that. So we're, I'm gonna come from the perspective in this conversation, I am gonna use the word vagina because I'm so used to that word. And I'm gonna use the word yoni, probably interchangeably. And so why are we even doing these steam baths? Why, what, what, are, what is it all about? Why are we doing it? So from your uh, yoni's perspective, Let's think about it like that. She's coming from the perspective of like, my goodness, you got menstruation, you have to menstruate, and then with menstruation comes either pads or tampons, and they could be, some people are using tampons, but some of them are using things that are scented and plastic and like, you know, not eco or organic, right? And then, and then your yoni is dealing with all your emotions associated around your menstruation. And then we're, the yoni is dealing with sex and sexual intercourse and either it's really satisfying or it's not or it's painful or it's good, whatever. All those, all the baggage that comes along with that and all the emotions that come along with that. 
And then you give birth right and you push out a baby or you have an episiotomy or you might have sutures or you might not have sutures or you might have a cesarean right and you have the whole massive conversation around the transformation and emotions that are tied into birth right and then you have the postpartum recovery so those are just some of the sensations and reasons why your yoni might not feel that great but then you have as you age you have atrophy, you have hormonal shifts and imbalances, right? And so these are some of the reasons why your yoni might not feel so good and that you want to tend to her and, and nurture her and help her feel better so that she performs for you. And I don't mean performance like, but some of you want to get pregnant. Some of you want to have better menstruation. Some of you want to recover from a baby. Some of you want to have a heightened libido and have more orgasms, right? So it's not like she needs to perform for you, but what she naturally could do if she was in the right circumstances is so much greater than probably what most of us are experiencing on an everyday because we're really disconnected, right? So that's where the yoni steams come in. It is one of the pieces of the puzzle of one of the ways of self-care practices that we can nurture and honor our bodies and reconnect to our bodies. Okay, so a yoni steam, just in the essentialness of what it is, is you have herbs, you put them in a bowl with some boiling water, the steam is nourishing, you're going to squat over or sit over the bowl and that steam is going to permeate the outer vulva, right? And that those cells are going to carry the nourishment, the medicinal qualities of the herbs in. And then you're going to adjust yourself so that the steam can enter in all your organs and all your spaces that it kind of needs to go into to rise up. And then from, we mentioned Taoist, so from an energetic perspective, from a, a Qigong perspective, you have meridians and you have a center vessel, right? A heart channel, a center line. So from, goes from your perineum, up into your cervix, up into your womb, up into then up into your heart space and up into your mind and out through the top of your head so you're connected. There's that central channel. And when you're sitting over those herbs and a really meditative and attentive mindset, you're pulling and drawing into you that therapeutic action to realign you into your center alignment. Right? So that's one of the aspects of yoni steam baths. I'm going to say baths a lot just because that's how I learned the word before. Just remember this video is about steam. You're not soaking in water. My next video will be about soaking in water baths. So I'm going to try to be careful with my language but these are yoni steams. Okay so what are some of the benefits of yoni steams? I'm going to go through a long list. One of the primary benefits our reasons people are looking to these steams are for their menstruation, help with their menstruation. Either they're having painful cramps, or they're bloating, or their cycles are irregular, or their cycles are starting with like old blood, or they're having heavy bleeding, or they're feeling really exhausted with their menstruation, or they're just trying to reconnect to their menstruation. But a lot of it deals with pain and discomfort of menstruation. And so potential benefits are to help ease and relieve those discomforts. Another reason people are turning to yoni steams is because they want to increase their fertility. And so increasing the fertility, a big reason I think that it's helpful is that to do this requires that you carve out a little time and a little space and you're making an effort and you're creating time and space and effort and room in your life for a baby to come in and I think actually that intention is really helpful not to mention the herbs and how the herbs are going to help with your whole womb health. Postpartum recovery, this is how I learned about Yoni Steams was my work as a midwife and my time spent in Central America. I was really familiar with steams and then I became a midwife and then I learned about Yoni Steams on a cassette tape from Midwifery Today. It was a really beautiful cassette tape and it's a beautiful practice. And in this video I'm going to talk more about postpartum 
At the same time, my next video is going to be so much more expansive on postpartum. There's so much more I want to tell you about my experience with the whole Yoni steams from the Mayan tradition. So that'll be in another video, but I'm going to talk a little bit about postpartum now. Just how what's happening postpartum is, think about it, you're, you just pushed out a baby or you just had a cesarean, right? Let's go from the push out a baby perspective. Your vagina is swollen and bruised and red and inflamed and sore and there are lacerate, little tiny lacerations or there's big cuts or there's stitches or you had an episiotomy, things are displaced, they're prolapsed, so it's tender. Your uterus is big and it's trying to cramp out all the extra blood and it's trying to, it's called involution where it goes way back down to pre-pregnancy size. Your hormones are fluctuating, you're changing more hormonally in the first 72 hours postpartum than you are in your entire pregnancy. Your body hurts from being doing, expressing, being in labor for so long and working so hard. Yoni steams are a wonderful way to help support your postpartum recovery. And if you've had a cesarean, yoni steams are totally appropriate to help your postpartum recovery and help your scar tissue. And so those are some of the reasons why women are turning to yoni steams. Other reasons are kind of have to do with libido and sensuality and sexuality. Some women are experiencing pain with intercourse. Some women are turning to these baths to like reignite, reawaken their femininity, femininity and their sensuality and sexuality, and to reawaken their creativity. And some reports say that when you do these yoni baths, it increases your ability to have stronger and more frequent orgasms. So there's that benefit. Another reason people are turning to yoni steams is they wanna cleanse out, they wanna cleanse their emotions. They, they want to cleanse trauma, they want to cleanse sexual trauma, they want to cleanse abuse, they want to cleanse like also just toxins that are in our bodies and in our lives from our the foods we eat and the life we live. So they want to cleanse things out. And then also reasons people are turning to yoni steams essentially is they might be having hemorrhoids and just pain and irritation or they're having vaginal dryness, or they're having prolapse, or they're having like PCOS and endometriosis, or they're having fibroids. All those are reasons that people are turning to yoni steams, and yoni steams are supporting their, their recovery and their healing process. Also, one other last piece of it is just women are turning to yoni steams to re reconnect and rekindle and kind of create a, uh, an environment and a lifestyle of one of ceremony and connection to the body and connection to nature. And so that's why, and so I'm saying the reasons why they're doing it and also these are benefits of the steam. But let's talk a little bit more about the timing of them and for some specifics. So if you are experiencing a normal, healthy, regular menstrual cycle, you're not cramping too much, your, your bleeding starts off nice and bright and pink, and you feel pretty good in your body, and you're pretty healthy, and you're exploring your femininity, and you're exploring your sensuality, and you're just trying something new to feel beautiful, feel connected, wonderful. My suggestion would be to do it not very often, but maybe a few times a year. And I would pick really specific special times. The easiest answer would be to do it on, like on the solstices and the equinoxes because you're already in that mindset of reevaluating your life. What are you going to keep with you? What are you going to let go of that last season? What's coming forth in your life? You're already journaling and writing and spending time in nature and time in the moon. So you might as well just add a yoni steam into that and just really embody that practice, right? And just really fill yourself up with that beauty. 
Another time would be like for a special occasion, like maybe you have a, something beautiful coming up, like you're about to get married, or it's a, um, an anniversary, or something special is about to happen. Or something, it's an anniversary of something that you're healing from, like, oh, this was a year ago when I had my miscarriage. Oh, I just gave birth. Oh, a year ago. Or, oh, that happened to me a year ago, right? And so something that you're processing and you're releasing, those are anniversaries of things, cycles that are changing, and so those are special times. But you would just do it one time and not, like, frequently. Now, if you're coming to explore yoni seams because you have menstrual cramps and menstrual pain and you're trying to improve your menstruation, you have to remember this is not a prescription. There's not a, like I can tell you the exact answer. This is an art. This is a feminine art and this is an art that you're going to experience for yourself and you're going to find what works best for you. Each one of us is going to have our own kind of need and our own reason for trying this. If you're experiencing cramps and pain and menstrual irregularities, just a general rule of thumb, let's look at it like this. If this is your, if two weeks before your menstruation is when you would start it. If you have really strong, bad cramps and it's really hurting you and you're looking for a solution, two weeks before your menstruation, do the steam once or twice, depending on the severity. And then also a week before, do the steam once or twice, depending on the severity of your situation. Have your menstruation, do, don't steam. And then based on your bleeding, if you feel like it all came out or you feel like this, this residual, some women will feel like it's appropriate to do it one more time, but most women won't need that. Okay? And then you're going to feel your experience. So generally speaking, most people will notice a sense difference in how what their blood looks like they'll notice a difference in the sensations that their body has during their menstruation yoni steam sometimes the effects are pretty obvious and pretty strong and fairly immediate and other times they're more subtle so if you're dealing with something that's really painful and it's been with you for a long time you have to give yourself a couple months to like really experience it before you say it didn't work right so be patient and, and try it out. Now for fertility reasons, if you're trying to improve your fertility, partially if, if once you get your menstruation really great, that might help your fertility. But if you're going to do it specifically to try to improve your fertility, then I would say the week before you're ovulating would be the time to do it. So the time, you would do it at least once, maybe twice, the week before you're ovulating. Do not do anything while you're ovulating. Let it, let it set, let it rest, let it be. It, you may have conceived. It, you don't know. I mean, maybe you know, but most of us don't know. So that week after ovulation, if you don't know if you've conceived, don't do a steam then either because you could potentially be pregnant. Then the next week is your menstruation. So you're not going to steam then either. Then a week after your menstruation, a week before your ovulation, that's when you start to do your steam again. Okay? Uh, what else? Also, once again, with that whole same premise of like, give yourself the time. Try it for a few three or four or six months before you expect to see like suddenly that you're pregnant. Okay? One thing that I didn't mention to you, which I do want to mention to you, is we, as Birth Song, we have so many resources for you. So for your menstruating women, I have all these wonderful resources in terms of videos and herbs and baths and teas and all this goodness. In the, in the search bar, put in the word menstruation, you'll see it all. Same with fertility, tons of resources to help you conceive and understand your fertility. Put in fertility in the search bar, you'll find it all. Okay, and so now we're going to talk about postpartum. Briefly, once again, put it in the search bar, postpartum, boom, you're going to see more on postpartum and breastfeeding than you'll find anything else on our website. It's so focused on you having a smooth postpartum transition and, and recovering fully from your birth in a way that feels 
good and that you feel nurtured as a mother, that is a huge priority that I have. So go there and put, put it in the search bar. But postpartum, I've already kind of touched it, but postpartum, there's so much happening with your body that you benefit from soaking either in a full herb bath or in a steam bath to just really, and I'm going to use the word, heal your perineum and put your perineum back together and put your pelvic floor back together and bring yourself back together. And I really hope you join us for our next video where I talk all about this beautiful Mayan practice, how you put a woman, help her get put back together. One thing I want to say though, about in general, about this video, when you're doing your yoni steams, you most of the time want to pick a real private place and be alone while you're doing your steam. But that's not the case when you're postpartum. When you're postpartum, have someone with you. You, you actually need some help and some support to be in the position that you're in. You're gonna need a sip, the baby's gonna wake up, you know, and then you're gonna need to get cleaned up and put a pad on and lay down. There's just a lot of pieces to go into that. So when you're doing a yoni steam in your immediate postpartum, please don't be alone. Have somebody with you. Okay? And then uh, also, other people are going to the steams because of their they're going through this whole perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopausal situation and transformation. And the deal is almost just like the girl that had the normal, healthy, vibrant life. You're kind of in that same place in terms of don't overdo the steams. Do them on special occasions, a few times a year, almost as just a self help maintenance actually, um, unless you are trying to maybe moisten. If you're trying to moisten, I'm going to share some herbs with you to help moisten. Or if you're trying to connect with your like sensuality, like maybe to increase your libido or something, you might kind of create maybe a little bit more of this like love sensual practice a little bit more frequently. But if not, then I would just do it on your solstices and equinoxes. Does that make sense? Another really important time for a yoni steam would be after a hysterectomy. So the immediate days after a hysterectomy, you, you know, recover. But then once you feel strong enough, but still pretty close to your surgery, not, not waiting too long, doing the yoni steam will be a beautiful way to help you recover from your surgery, help for the scar. And then it will also be a way for you to reconnect with your feminine femininity. I'm having a hard time saying that word today. Because the reason why I'm saying this is important, we sometimes get confused. We think our hormones, we're a woman because we have hormones. Or we're a woman because we have a uterus. So when your hormones change and your uterus is gone, then you're kind of lost in your feminine essence. And so these themes are a way for you to reconnect with your feminine essence. Because it doesn't matter your hormones or your organs that you have in your body. Your feminine essence is still present. You may be disconnected from it, but it still exists. And, it, and these themes offer you a beautiful healing opportunity. Another time that would be really good to do the steams is if you've had any sort of like sexual experience that makes you like uncomfortable, that you feel like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't think I liked that. Right? So before that like gets too steeped in and take root into your body, you want to let that, that, those emotions go and let that energy go and kind of let that out of your body and honor yourself so that you have healthy boundaries and you're really clear of what you allow in and what's acceptable. And this will help you have these healthy boundaries after you go through your healing process. So pretty much immediately, if you can, go right into that practice to get it out and set clear boundaries. And then one other thing is if, you, when, if you're in a relationship and you're separating out of your relationship and your one lover is leaving your life and you want to cleanse that and bless them as they go on their journey and then find your own emptiness and your own stillness and your own space before you invite someone else in, a cleanse is a really beautiful opportunity. Esteem is a really oppor beautiful opportunity for that. 
the essential question is when is the best time for a steam? I just mentioned all those reasons. The best time for a steam could, the easy answer is whenever you want to, except for there are some times that it's not really good. Let me go into when it's not really good. If you're trying to conceive, don't do a steam during ovulation. Don't do a steam if you think you're pregnant or you are pregnant. Don't do a steam if you have an IUD. Don't do a steam if you have an active infection. Okay, you have to remember, I'm coming from the perspective on this whole conversation that this is like a health, a home health practice. However, there are spas and salons and places where you go publicly out and steam, like with groups of people are in a public place. So I know that you know this, but I'm gonna gently remind you. Do not go if you have an active infection, a fever, or any sort of anything happening in your cervix, ovaries, or uterus that seems active and contagious, especially herpes lesions. Now, when you're at home, if you have herpes and you wanna do a practice and steam, then after the lesions burst and then the skin starts to heal back over, then do the steam. And I think the steam would feel really good and help facilitate your healing and it makes good sense to do that. The other reason then when to not do it would be during menstruation, okay? One thing I want to say about when to do it and when to not do it, and I'm about to go into this a little bit more, is when to do it is, would be a good time to do it is at nighttime, like in the evening, right before bed. So when you're finished with your steam, then you can kind of clean up and dry off, stay warm, and lay right down. That would be the timing of the day to do it. Okay, versus that's another reason. It's good that all these companies are doing these spa treatment, but you're gonna do a steam and then you're gonna get in a car and then you go to traffic and then you're gonna go out and eat and then talk on the phone and then be on Facebook and da, da, da. And you're gonna be like on Facebook on your steam. So there is a little bit of like that's still outward and the point of the steam is inward. Everything in, right? All right. Let's go to the herbs. I have some of these herbs here and on the blog post that's associated with this video, uh, I'll write out all the herbs for you. Okay, I'm just gonna start here. So this top one, this first one is lemon balm. Lemon balm is really beautiful, uplifting, joyful herb. And lemon balm is also an antiviral herb. I just mentioned the word herpes. So if you're having a herpes, you're recovering from that, and her then lemon balm could go into your bath, could be one of the herbs that go into your steam bath. Okay, this next one is yarrow. Yarrow is an astringent, it's a very powerful infection fighter, and it's a wonderful first aid herb. And so if you're postpartum and you're dealing with lacerations and bleeding, or you have any tissue trauma or damage or wound or bruising, yarrow is really great for that. And yarrow is astringent and it's tightening. So if you're feeling like you have atrophy and things are really wet and you're trying to dry it up and kind of pull it up, yarrow pulls it up and tightens it up and dries it up, okay? Now lavender, lavender is a beautiful herb for love, to self-love, right? To, to take your time and to relax. In this situation, the word relaxing sounds nice, but the word relaxing is really important because if you're doing these herbs because you have pain or you have painful cramps and you have endometriosis and your body's hurting, the therapeutic qualities of lavender when it enters into your wound space can help relax and help relax that endometrial lining. And people that have endometriosis have a lot of adhesions and it's really tight and tense. And so if you can relax that, it helps with your pain and it helps your body not have to cramp down so hard. So not only is it pleasant smelling and feeling, it really is effective for uterine pain. Chamomile, chamomile I refer to as the grandmother. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll hear me talk about her as a grandmother. We're also talking about yoni steams as an ancient healing practice. Ancient means our foremothers before us did it, 
And so now, and I talk about I'm carrying on the tradition of the ancient traditions in the modern world. And so, of course, chamomile will be a part of that because she's the grandmother. She's also very relaxing. Vi um, it's she, she, I, I refer to her as a grandmother. She, she's mildly antiseptic, so she's good for infections and she's really great for pain. And then you have calendula, or also called marigold. When you see marigold, you're going to see calendula. Calendula is really bright and sunny and just kind of brightens up a room. It's very emollient and soothing to your skin. It's called a vulinary. So once again, if you're wanting to moisturize, if you have pain, bruising, swelling, stitches, rashes, itching, uh, calendula should go into your bath, your steam bath. Your roses, roses are what you give to your lover, to your beloved. So you're trying to create in this situation, imagine you're trying to create sensual experience and, and ignite your sensuality or your self-love or forgiveness or see your body as a temple and you're laying down an offering in front of your temple, then roses are can be a beautiful part of it. Another attribute about roses is that they smell so good and that they dry up tissue so they're really tightening and lifting. But they're drying, they're not moisturizing. They're very pleasant though. Um, Rosemary, rosemary can be a part of your bath, steam bath. Rosemary is um, very antiseptic and astringent and cleansing and cleaning. So if you feel like you have something that, like an infection that you're trying to clean out. But also rosemary helps you remember and we're going through, if you're going through these whole ceremonies for trying to waken up your creativity and reconnect with your lost parts of yourself. Rosemary helps you remember and reclaim lost parts of yourselves. And rosemary helps increase circulation into your genital area, so it helps just improve part of what your body's own natural cleansing capabilities. There's a lot more herbs on the list than I have right here. I'm gonna just go through a few of them. One of them is uva ursi, which is gonna be real specific for urinary tract infections. If you feel like you're going to do this bath because you have a lot of yeast, then you can add Pau Diarco to your steam. You could add garlic to your steam. Um, other ones that you could add to your steam for yeast would be oregano or thyme. Those would all be good in your steam. There are some herbs that are just really supportive to your reproductive organs, and that's going to be red raspberry leaf and motherwort and peony and damiana. Damiana is going to smell really good and it's going to help you be really relaxed. So if you're needing to tighten, tonify, dry things up, like your postpartum bleeding, you're feeling like you have a prolapse or you have hemorrhoids, then you, and like yeasty wet, then you'll want witch hazel bark, yarrow, rose, or juniper. All of those are going to smell really good and kind of tighten things up. Now, if you're needing to moisturize, then you'll want to do comfrey or marshmallow root, plantain, calendula, and seaweed. I've never worked with seaweed in my steams before, so this was nice to, but it's a beautiful reminder. I talk about seaweed in the blog post all about perineal care, so how to prepare for your birth and postpartum for your perineal care. I bring up seaweed. This and it really makes me want to say something about how when you're in absorbing the therapeutic actions of properties of these herbs, some of these herbs are nourishing, like red raspberry leaf, comfrey, um, kombu, bladderwrack, those seaweeds, they're nourishing. And that is a way that you can nourish your, your yoni and moisturize it, okay? Nourishing and moisturizing tends to lead to a deep form of healing. Okay, so how do you do this steam? How do you do the steam? So the steam is really simple. I'm going to share with you a couple things. The first thing, the most important thing, is for you to find a safe, 
private, warm space. It could be your bathroom, it could be your bedroom, it could be in front of an altar, it could be wherever you feel where you can go inward, right? When you're setting up your space, it should be, you should have a carpet and it should be a warm room. When you're brewing or preparing your steam, you get a, a quart or two or three of water and you bring it to a boil and then you use a cup of dried herbs. If you're gonna use fresh herbs, use a quart of fresh herbs. Once your water is boiling, put the herbs in, I turn off the water and put the lid on and let it steep. While your herbs are steeping, go prepare your stuff. At first, your first time you're doing it, it's going to seem like you got a lot to do and it's a little bit awkward and takes a little longer, but after you've done it a couple times, it's real easy. The stuff you need to gather, you need to gather a sheet and a blanket and some towels so you can create a warm, like, teepee. You need to be setting yourself up so that you're comfortable. Either you're going to squat over this bowl or you're going to get on your knees and kneel over this bowl or you're going to have a fancy uh, yoni steam stool. You could do that. Or you could even clean out your toilet and drain the water out and put the bowl of herbs in the toilet and you can sit over the top of that. I have the big pot and then I, it's just really big. It's like huge. And so I just put the water in it and the steam and then, so everyone's like, don't do it in a metal container. It should always be a glass container. So I poured it into a glass container inside the big pot and then sat over the top of it. So you can do that. You gotta get creative, but you wanna be comfortable because you're gonna be there for um, 10, 20, really 30 minutes, right? Think of this steam as like a facial. So you're gonna select herbs that you would put on your face. The temperature would be similar to your face. You're not gonna put your face over like blazing hot steam and like burn your eyes and your mouth, right? So there's the level of sensitivity and the delicacy of the tissues are similar. So you've got your room warm, your supplies, you've got your herbs, you're going to bring your herbs in, you're going to set them up, you're going to sit over, kneel over, squat over your bowl, and then you're going to wrap the lower half of your body with the sheet and with this heavier blanket so you're creating like a teepee and you're holding the heat in. This is an ancient tradition from the Mayan tradition and Mayans are really big about hot and cold and they want things to be hot and so there cannot be any drafts, right? So you have no heat, I mean sorry, no air coming into your nice warm teepee and you're sitting there and now what are you doing as you sit there, right? That's up to you. Lots of women pray or meditate or read or journal or sing or watch YouTube videos. Maybe you're watching YouTube video right now on the Yoni's pot. Wouldn't that be so? If so, put it in the comments. <laughs> right? So you're doing something, but my, my suggestion to you is whatever you're doing, do it with mindfulness, with engagement, with the intent of listening to your body to see what the messages are that come up for you. After about 30 minutes or when you feel ready to get up, go ahead and dry off and clean up and stay really warm. Wrap yourself up in those warm blankets and go lay down in your bed and sleep for the night. That steam will still permeate and still enter into your body and still work on your body. And so ideally, the next day when you wake up, you'll feel rested and restored and, and loved, right? Some of the sensations you might experience immediately after should, will be relaxation. And then as the days that are coming, that follow, you might experience um, some wetness come out. You might have some clots or some mucus come out. You might have emotions that are released a little bit at a time. 
So be open, be receptive, be curious, maybe write them down. And some of these things that might happen with time, you might notice your menstruation changing, you might notice your fertility, your connection to femininity, your connection to sensuality. All those things will shift and adjust, especially when you're spending this much time and focus on it. Okay, what do I want to say now? I want to say when I do all this Googling and looking out there, like what's everyone talking about on the internet about yoni steams? And I'm so excited to see how many people are actually doing this and um, sharing it with their friends and they're really into it. And I'm so just, my heart goes to you. And I also see all these people that are like, Psh! bashing it right and, and the people that are bashing it are most of the time they're medical professionals and myself who included who is a medical professional who I am a midwife and I know how influential our opinion is and how important our voice is when we're taking care of clients so when I see how upset and angry they are and just like flippant about the baths, it actually really upsets me because it appears as though most of the things that they're upset about are things that are just illustrations that they lack understanding and they don't have accurate information and that if there was a little bit of time and a, maybe a communication or an ability, a desire to study more about plant medicine and energy medicine and about emotional healing and trauma healing, that they would see how when a woman is having cramps and pain and she comes to you, just giving her an ibuprofen doesn't fix it, doesn't help her, you're not really being helpful. And to make her feel like she's foolish and just naive that she would do something so silly as to like steam clean her vagina. Like that's just really not in alignment with what I'm teaching. However, there, I also see some people on the internet, they're like, yeah, do a yoni steam all the time. Do whatever you want, a couple times a week, whatever. I also think that's not safe. And I think there are a few things that those naysayers are saying that are considerations that I want to bring up that I actually agree with what their, their concerns are. First and foremost, the naysayers are saying like, well, it's dangerous because the very infection you're trying to treat, you might actually be perpetuating the infection. And what what's happening, potentially could be happening, is your yoni, your vagina has an, you know, an ecosphere, a microbiome, there's an ecology, there is living microorganisms in your vagina and that there is a certain pH that needs to be maintained to help your body prevent infection. And so when you heat up your vagina and when you add a bunch of herbs or antibacterial herbs and disinfectant herbs to cleanse it out, you could actually be destroying and hurting your microbiome and that infection that keeps coming back, keeps coming back, keeps coming back, actually could be perpetuating that infection. And if you are in a situation where you keep having this infection and keep doing these herbs to try to help it and it's not getting better, then I really urge you, please, please go find a healthcare provider that's in alignment with your core values, an herbalist, a midwife, an acupuncturist, a naturopath, somebody that knows a lot about the microbiome and about women's health and about herbs so they can help you from an examined professional opinion and perspective because it shouldn't keep coming back like that and you shouldn't need to do a bunch of yoni steams to fix it. If that's happening, there is, a, there is actually a, a problem. The other thing, and I agree with them, the naysayers, is how these yoni steams really perpetuate this negative myth about how dirty our body is and how we always need to cleanse it and how we're just so, we're always looking to buy something to make us feel beautiful, like we're looking for something outside of ourselves. And, we're, and there's all this marketing around this beauty and what you need, right? So that you can be feminine again. And there's this product, and I'm not going to say the name, but there was this product, and I, I liked the name, and I was attracted to the name, and I looked at it, and I was like, oh, this is cool. It's 50 bucks. And so I started to look at what's in it. And it's like almond oil, some rose oil, 
some Cassandra extraction, which costs two dollars and ten cents per ounce, and um, vitamin E, right? And so you don't need a $50 one ounce little bottle of almond oil to drop into your yoni steam, right? That's ridiculous. Alan with Herb Company. I make herbal products for people and, I'm no, and I want to sell my stuff. But I'm in no way trying to take advantage of you so that you will buy a $50 one ounce almond oil with a little bit of rose for smell, right? That, that, that's ridiculous. And I agree with those naysayers for that. Also, the, the perpetuation of just how gross your body is, your, your uterus and your yoni and your vagina is very self-cleansing and healing. And when we're doing these cleansing healing practices, you heard me say cleansing and healing, some of it is energetic from, because every interaction that we have is energy, right? You can have interactions that are really build you up and lift you up, and you can have interactions that really break you down. And so when I'm saying we're cleansing ourselves and we're cleaning out this energy, there's a part of that, but you are not dirty, right? You're not doing this to, because you need to get better. What it, it's really just a way to highlight and enhance and create like an offering to your sacredness, not to your grossness and to clean it. Does that make sense? And so I want to highlight and honor these yoni steams because I think it is a really beautiful practice and can really honor your femininity and your sacredness. But I also think they're overused. They're marketed in a way that kind of steals your power sometimes. They're like, and then you're buying $50 of almond oil. And I also think that you do them a bunch. It, they can be dangerous in terms of affecting your microbiome. And I just don't want you, the other thing that they're real concerned about is that you get burned. So don't get burned. <laughs> don't burn yourself. Test the waters, test the steam before you sit on top of it. But I think you're wise enough to know that. So I'm going to start to wrap up this video. I know we covered a lot. Next video, I want to talk about postpartum, specifically postpartum. And then we'll talk about herb baths and yoni steams and how to recover from postpartum. And we'll just really tie that in. If you're watching this video anywhere other than our website, go there right now. That's birthsongbotanicals.com. And put your little search terms in there. You'll see all the stuff I have for you. And until next time, my friends, drink deep and always walk in beauty.